Apakah kamu pernah mendengar penyakit adenomyosis? Adenomyosis adalah kondisi ketika jaringan endometrium ada di dalam dan tumbuh ke dalam dinding uterus. Berikut penjelasan lengkapnya oleh Dr. Peter Chiu, spesialis ginekologi. Now, what about adenomyosis? Adenomyosis, when it grow to a big size, sometimes it can be mistaken for fibroids. So how do people get adenomyosis? One of the theory is that, you know, the menstrual blood, there's a break. In the, in the opening here. Menses, you are supposed to flow up this way. Huh? The womb is here. This is the, the cavity. Menses is supposed to flow up this way. But if there's a break here, the menses can go inside and then they start to grow in the muscle. So if it is a very small one, usually no problem. They don't cause problem but it's called focal adenomyosis. But majority, the, these things start to grow. And during menstruation, all this blood cannot come out. So it causes a lot of pain, more painful than fibroids. And if it is all over the womb, then it's called diffuse. The whole womb is getting bigger and they have a lot of menstruations. And The symptoms and signs are very similar to fibroids. If, and sometimes, even ultrasound, you cannot tell whether it's due to adenomyosis or is it uterine fibroids. So sometimes we have to use MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, to help us to find out whether it is a myom or is it an adenomyoma because they look the same, also a lump, okay? All right, now. Apakah ada perbedaan dalam mengobati fibroid dan adenomyosis? Bagaimana perbedaannya? Begini penjelasan Dr. Peter. So, for fibroids and adenomyosis, What can the Western medicine do? Either you wait until it's very big and give symptoms, and then, or you can take it up. We call it myomectomy. But sometimes it's very, very severe, or the, or the patient is already near 30 plus, 40 plus, and then a lot of anemia. Sometimes we take up the womb, called hysterectomy. For adenomyosis, either you wait and see or you operate. But this operation is more difficult than myomectomy. It's called adenomyomectomy because the fibroids, you have no roots. You can shell it out very easily. Adenomyosis, the roots are all over the place. So you cannot take out and the operations can be very, very difficult. And the uterus will be very, very scarred. So sometimes the pain is so unbearable, you take out the womb, call hysterectomy. Jika pengobatan dilakukan dengan operasi, jenis operasi seperti apa yang digunakan untuk menangani fibroid dan adenomyosis? Now, how do you do either by open method, that is the older way, called laparotomy, open method, or you go by the keyhole surgery. Uh, called laparoscopy or minimally invasive surgery. This, so what are the, so this is more popular nowadays because the patients can go home a bit earlier and the, the recovery is much faster. Apakah ada efek samping dari operasi terbuka untuk mengobati fibroid? Apakah masa pemulihan pasca operasi membutuhkan waktu yang lama? What are the risks of surgery? You can bleed a lot. You can have, after the operations, there's always adhesion. That means the, the intestine may be stuck to the womb itself, to the uterus, to the wound, to the tummy itself. 
Or sometimes when they are pregnant, they can get scar ruptured. So sometimes we get this undiagnosed cancer. So when we take out the meal, then we send it for microscopic examination. Then they say, the report come back, cancer. We call it lyomyosarcoma. All right. Apa saja kelebihan operasi laparoskopi dibanding metode operasi yang biasa? Apakah laparoskopi lebih minim efek samping? Selain operasi, apakah ada cara lain untuk mengobati miom? Simak penuturan Dr. Peter Chiu berikut ini. So what are the risks of surgery? You can bleed a lot. You can have, after the operations, there's always adhesion. That means the, the intestine may be stuck to the womb itself, to the uterus, to the wound, to the tummy itself. Or sometimes when they are pregnant, they can get scar ruptured. So sometimes we get this undiagnosed cancer. So when we take out the meal, then we send it for microscopic examination. Then they say, the report come back, cancer. We call it lyomyosarcoma. All right. So, so this is the old way, the big cut. All right. This is a small cut called the keyhole surgery. It's a smaller scar, less painful, and able to eat soon after operation, faster recovery, and can go back to work and less complication than operation like this. What about other, can we treat myome or adenomyosis with medicine? There are some medicines like injections, like medicine here, but this is only temporarily, temporarily, because the myome can grow back in. And then, there's another one called uterine artery embolization. You can only kill the fibroids one at a time because, and this can be very troublesome, it's done by the x-ray doctor. So it is not commonly practiced in Singapore. Dengan kecanggihan teknologi yang ada pada saat ini, para ahli berhasil menemukan metode pengobatan non-operasi untuk menangani fibroid dan adenomyosis. Mereka menyebut metode tersebut dengan HIFU. Bagaimana cara kerja HIFU untuk mengobati fibroid dan adenomyosis? Apa saja efek samping metode HIFU ini? So, using the ultrasound, we use the transducer to focus the sound wave. And then we can pinpoint and focus on the fibroids we want to burn. So you can burn, burn off all the fibroids using the ultrasound energy. Okay? So it's called high intensity focus ultrasound, high fu. So high fu is a sound, it's not ra no radiation. All right? But it focus a lot of heat to destroy the tissues. So the principle is high intensity is focus and it burn 65 degrees to up to 100 degrees okay but most of the cancers uh, most of the fibroids by above 60 degree you can call you can burn off all the tissues already and how do we guide we use ultrasound to guide some people i will talk to you about mri haifu okay so there are two types of haifu one is called mri Haifu, what is called ultrasound haifu. So in Singapore, Farrer Park, we use ultrasound haifu. I will tell you the difference, differences later on. So this is uh, the machine we use in Farrer Park. There's a computer here. The doctor sit down here. The patient is lying here. And we can talk to the patients. I'll show you the video later on. So this is using ultrasound and you can focus it and kill the cells, all right? So if this is a meal, you can kill it step by step, all right? 
and this is what happened. I'll show you the video now. So you see, this is the transducer and the, the plastic here is focused. So you can burn the phone up. And then now we use the computer and we can, this is the ox lever and the transducer here can focus it into the part, the deeper part of the ox lever and grave, engrave these two words, China. You see, we can engrave the two words here. So the, we take out the liver, outside is normal, but when we cut it into a certain depth, you see, you can burn and engrave the two words here. So in other words, you can focus it to a certain depth. The rest, all okay. So this is, okay. So this is a transducer. Transducer is here and this is the womb. And we can focus it and kill the cells there. And we cut them slice by slice. This is the ultrasound haifu. And we can see the fibroids using the ultrasound here. This is the fibroids and we burn it. And you can see on the ultrasound, when the, the tissue is burned, it becomes gray white. I'll show you some more pictures later on. At the end of the operation, we inject a dye to make sure that the rest of the fiber is burned. The transducer is moving around so we can see how to focus the sound wave to the womb. No surgery, no bleeding. And patients can talk. Usually the operation takes about one to two hours. And the fiber is here, after burning, it becomes like this, empty. The blood supply is cut off. And they can go back to work the next day, uh, one or two days. So the next slide should show you how it is done. So using the MRI, you see the, the fibroids. You can talk to the patient. This is under ultrasound.
So no operation. Okay. So as I said, we have ultrasound guided and MRI guided. Okay. So in Singapore, we use this one. There's an MRI. I'll tell you the difference. MRI is inside the tube here. Whereas here, the patient is exposed and no GA, no anesthesia. We only give sedations and some painkiller. All right. So what's the difference between MRI guided? Because it's not real time. It takes 12 to 30 seconds for the, for the ultrasound to work. And you wait for 45 to 90 seconds, cool it down. Because when you have the energy, it creates heat. So you need to cool it down. But sometimes during this time, sometimes the intestine can go in. And therefore, you can get injured, can get burned. So, so it's not real time. So, so the, the advantage of ultrasound is that the transducer can move around and can see it there and then. Patients don't have to be inside the tube and you can communicate and the patients can move around. Uh, sometimes we can not, not say move around, but sometimes the patients, we can ask them to shift a bit higher, a bit lower, so that we can see the fibroids and then we can fire the, the, the sound wave. So MRI, a lot of noise, and it takes longer, sometimes longer than four to five hours. And patients will feel very, very claustrophobic and very, very uncomfortable inside. And should there be anything happen, you cannot communicate directly with the, with, with the doctor. Whereas here, using ultrasound is only about one to two hours. And the, to kill the, the fibroids, effectiveness is 80 to 90%, whereas in the MRI, it's only 20 to 50%. And the treatment, the ultrasound HIFU is about the same or maybe less than the surgery, than the open up or using keyhole surgery. It's much cheaper. All right. So HIFU is done by the gynecologist who know the womb better, whereas in the MRI, it's done by the X-ray doctor. Mendengar penjelasan Dr. Peter, kita jadi penasaran nih. Apa saja sih keunggulan dari metode pengobatan HIFU dibanding yang lainnya? Begini penjelasan Dr. Peter. So, the complication rates and side effect are very low compared with the conventional surgeries like open open operations or keyhole surgery. Let's see what's the so over almost 10,000 cases, what are the common side effects? Sometimes a bit of vaginal secretion, tummy aches, about 2%, leg pain and buttock pain. This is about 0.7%. And sometimes a little bit of urine pain, about 0.5%. Very low here. No fever, no injuries to the intestine only 0.02%, okay, 0.02% out of 10,000 have some injury to the intestines. So which is much lower than the open surgery. Open surgery, you can injure the intestine too, okay? So the, the, the adverse effect of HIFU is very, very low. Those are minor ones, like a bit of pain, a bit of leg pain, huh? and bleeding. All right, so sometimes HIFU cannot be done for every case. Sometimes you have too many surgeries, we don't want to do it because it can burn the scar, it can cause the scar. So some, we have to be very selective when we do the operation. And does HIFU affect fertility? So how do we know whether after burning off all these things, will it make the patient less fertile? So how do we know? 
we measure the ovary, the reserve in the ovaries. So this is the research paper, and they found that after HIFU, the reserve is the same. Whether you burn the myome or adenomyosis, the ovary is not affected. So it does not affect fertility. In fact, I have two patients who had adenomyosis, very difficult. We don't operate on her, we do the HIFU and they deliver this year. All right, so they found that of this paper here, the research, they do the research, 78 patients were conceived and 71 delivered without any obstetric risk. What we are most worried if we have open operations or keyhole surgery is that sometimes the womb may burst during the labor. So they found that, that with using HIFU, there's no risk of rupturing the womb. Okay, and here another result, 2016, they follow up 68 HIFU, 54 conceived, about 10 months. Okay, 10 months, average about 10 months you conceive after HIFU. And of this, 21 delivered healthy baby, no uterine rupture. All right, no uterine rupture. Another paper, 2011 to 2016 in Chongqing, 52, 20 conceived after about eight to nine months and 11, 11 delivered healthy babies. Personally, I have two patients uh, out of five who conceived after the high food treatment and they delivered normal.